Hello, welcome to the very first episode of Camera West TV. We're very glad to have you with us. Today we're gonna to take a look at Barnack Leica cameras. So what is a Barnack? Barnack refers to Oscar Barnack, the creator of Leica cameras. Oscar decided that he was tired of carrying the large and heavy cameras of the day on his hiking trips. And he also had asthma, so it made it difficult for him to carry them. So he designed the Leica One. This camera was first available in uh, standard production in 1925. And as you can see, it has a fixed lens that's not removable from the camera body. It has no rangefinder whatsoever. It just has a small optical viewfinder. But otherwise, it really set the stage for what Leica cameras would become for the next 50 years. Leica 1As are easily identifiable by their hockey stick infinity lock here, which prevents the camera from focusing until you unlock it. These cameras are also very notable for their collapsible lenses. As you can see, the lenses extend and collapse out of the body, which makes them very small and lightweight cameras. And it also makes it so that you can easily slip them even into a shirt pocket. We've also got a Leica 2 here. Um, this shows the evolution of the Barnack series. This lens is removable, unlike the lenses of the Leica 1 series. The lenses of the Leica 1 series were individually fitted to each camera body and were fixed. For the Leica 2, Leica standardized the flange so that any interchangeable lens could be used. And really, the Leica 2 of 1932 is really the first system camera that existed, where you had lenses from 35 millimeter to 135 millimeter available that could all interchange. The other major benefit of the Leica 2, and this would have been huge at the time, is that it has an integrated rangefinder built into the camera body. So as you can see, you have a window for your viewfinder, but also for your rangefinder right next to each other. And this was a big deal because with cameras like the Leica 1, with no built-in rangefinder, you had to use a device like this. This is a Leica Photis external rangefinder. And this works on the same principle as the rangefinder in here. You have two different windows that let in the light and you can um, focus by coinciding the images. These would just be mounted directly in the cold shoe like so. And you'd have to use this if you wanted to focus um, accurately with this camera. Leica 2's got you covered with the built-in rangefinder, the interchangeable lenses. This really set the stage for all of the Leica cameras to come. So you'll hear these described as Leica thread mount cameras. That's often shortened to LTM, Leica right. thread mount. Another name for the thread of these Leica cameras is L39 because it's 39 millimeters in width. You'll hear them called screw mount or SM cameras. LSM, like a screw mount? You don't really see LSM like you see LTM. Gotcha. You'll see L39 um, or just screw mount. The camera I'm holding right here, this is a Leica 3F black dial. Um, this is a post-war camera. It was the first camera from Leica um, to feature built-in flash sync. So it's the first camera you could easily use external flashes with. And then finally right here, we've got the venerable 3G the very last of the line of the Leica screw mount cameras actually released after the M3. And it's got a much larger viewfinder window than the other cameras. It still has separate windows for the viewfinder and the rangefinder, but they're much closer together, making it easier to switch back and forth between them. But the big difference is this much larger viewfinder that's parallax corrected, which is very helpful. So, so what's the difference between the viewfinder and the rangefinder. That's a good point. So before um, you saw integrated rangefinder viewfinders, this is what you saw. You saw cameras that had separate windows for the rangefinder and the viewfinder. What's really interesting about these Leica 2 cameras is that these were advertised by Leica as autofocus. Oh, all right. Which is really funny for us to hear today because clearly this yeah, is about as better. manual focus yeah. as a camera gets. So, so what did they mean by autofocus? By autofocus, what they meant is that instead of having to attach an external rangefinder like this, the rangefinder was built, built into the camera yeah. and it worked with all of the different lenses that were mounted to the camera. Yeah. So you needed to use different viewfinders, obviously, for longer lenses, but the rangefinder was coupled to all the lenses. Yeah. So you could automatically focus any lens. The Barnack Leicas have this undeniable style, and I think a lot of that has to do with the very streamlined oval shape of these cameras. They're really, they feel great in the hand because the edges are rounded and they can, you know, really easily slip it, just like you say, into a dinner jacket pocket, yeah. even a shirt pocket like this. For a good reason, these cameras capture kind of like a pre-war classical camera aesthetic. Like when we imagine old time cameras, you know, certain Rolleiflexes or Graflex cameras come to mind for yeah. old press cameras. But this shape is iconic because Leicas were the very finest cameras in the world 
and they were very successful. And, and like, and it carried on into the M series. That's precisely right. And what we have here, like, look at this. We've got a 1925 Leica 1A, yeah. and a 1957 to 63 G. Yeah. So a good 32 years. Yeah, just yeah. about. And what's interesting is that the Leica 3G was actually released after the M3. Gotcha. So after the M3 oh, so, so they, came in and totally revamped the world of photography as we know it, there was still such a demand for screw mount Leicas and for the classic engineering of the Barnack cameras yeah. that they continued to sell the 3G quite successfully. Mm -hmm. One thing that's common to all screw mount Leica cameras is that loading the film is through the base plate only. These cameras are easy to load once you're familiar with them, but your first few tries might be a little difficult, especially because modern film leaders have to be cut to a certain shape to fit the size of old film leaders to fit these. But you would have to remove the spool, load the film into this, put the spool and the cassette back in the camera, load it up and fire. This Leica is actually fitted with the 2.5 Hector lens, which is a little bit more unusual to see. It honestly doesn't have a great reputation in terms of image quality. It's a triplet, uh, six elements, three groups, um, totally uncoated, so you might get a little extra flair in your images. But I think that another way to look at these cameras is to compare them maybe to an M camera. Just look at these side by side, even, you know, it's much smaller. It's just got a different attitude to it, you know? Yeah. Another big difference of Barnack Leicas compared to M Leicas is that all M Leicas are lever wind. Yeah. So if you want to shoot that camera, wind and fire like that. Whereas all Barnack Leicas are knob wind. Are these cameras ideal for action and sports today? No, they're not. They're slower, more methodical cameras. But that's something that you can take advantage of in your shooting style. It can be a very refreshing break to take some time with one of these Barnack Leicas, slow down a little bit. You're still gonna have all of the features you need to take excellent full frame, very high resolution images when like processed and scanned properly. There's just a certain class and understated style to Barnack Leicas, which makes them enduring collector's objects, but also they really shouldn't be discounted for their shooting abilities. Mm -hmm. Thanks for tuning in to our very first episode. We'll hit you back with uh, more quality Leica content very shortly. Boom.